Hi, my name is Rosalien Steur from sketching.nl and in this tutorial I will show you how to make a quick sketch of a Zeppelin using the program Corel Painter. I select the brush tool and the freehand sketching option to start my line sketch. The object will fly above the horizon looked at from below and is started with a cylinder. I draw the central axis of the cylinder and perpendicular I add a major axis for each ellipse. Adding the ellipses and connecting them will build the shape. If you would by the way rotate the document, you will see it from the top and the same perspective rules will apply. In this ideation I do so freehand to get a quick result. Please do not worry too much about it not being so precise and tidy. For now a quick setup is important to keep your idea fresh. The vertical line through the center of the shape will indicate its top and bottom. A tangent to the ellipse will determine the direction perpendicular to it, as seen in perspective. So the perspective directions are not chosen, but derived from the ellipses, not the other way around. If all goes okay, the four lines that you see now are all converging towards the same vanishing point. I can also sketch a line through the center again, using this conversion, to estimate the two widest points of the circle in perspective. Connecting these points throughout the shape We'll cut it in a top and a bottom half. Um, I will enhance now the parts of the ellipses that are seen, so to underline its depth, making sure these lines are particularly rounded at the outlines, so as to emphasize the round character of the shape. I even sketch them a bit further around, you see, to exaggerate. You also, you by the way, need to do this quite dark to keep them visible for later after adding some color. I select the color and I set the digital airbrush to a bigger size, thereby reducing its opacity. Quite a large size I set it to. I try not to cover the shape completely, but build it up layer by layer. I create a gradient towards the outline to suggest reflectivity of the surrounding color there. For the shaded side underneath I drag the color picker towards black. The darker area you will see opposite of the sun which is in this case slightly off center at the bottom. The shape of the shade is pointy towards the front and upwards in the back because these front and back parts are derived from spherical shapes. Uh, some extra brightness is seen higher up at the spherical part at the front of course, and some extra full color parts will mimic reflections. Okay, it's time to enhance some of the lines again. So to clean up the sketch I will boldly select around the contour and press delete. Uh, later, after that I can refine this contour with an eraser and of course the straight line option to, uh, to set it. Cleaning up around the sketch and have a strong contour will enable you to easily add a background gradient for example. Setting the background to match in light I use a custom made linear gradient. The light here comes from the top left side so there the background should be brightest. Let's try a white to blue background like this. The gradient is now applied when I select the paint bucket. Well that's a bit too much and it ate away some of the shape. I reset the tolerance and try again. Ok, this is better. Setting the gradient to radial instead of linear, uh, it will actually seem like a sun. So I'm now going to place it there. Using the lasso I select part of the shape. Um, well, See how you can alter, in this case dent, the shape a little by brushing dark and bright areas derived from the color of the shape itself. Light and shading. The shape alteration can be then emphasized by cross sections. Um, the cross sections are not just placed anywhere but strategically. For example at the top 
bottom or widest of the shape. These are effective also in emphasizing the orientation of the object, as they refer to the x, y and z directions. Ok, let's place some straight lines here, to enhance the perspective direction as derived earlier from the ellipses. Well, these lines can be used later on as a grid to sketch the cabin and other parts that I add. But for this instruction I will just leave them visible. Let's make a wing here, by sketching it with the selection tool. I can adapt the selection, which is easy, so I can juggle it around a little bit. Ok, another wing here. And within this selection I will add airbrush, not at full opacity, and I can even have the option to leave it a little bit transparent. If I invert the selection I can make the cast shadow and reflections that are very close to the wings. And within the wings again, you can use for example bright and dark lines to emphasize their orientation or to add a texture and thickness, etc. Placing these bright and dark lines very close together will result in a rib, a nerve or a groove. Ok, you will probably also see a wingtip opposite of the shape. Uh, I will use less contrast over there to make it appear further away. Now I will use the freehand lasso selection tool to estimate the contour of a very large cabin underneath. Let's see where this will lead us. But there's room for adjusting and even to reposition it if you like. I think it works best if it overlaps the other shapes just a little bit. It creates extra depth if it overlaps. I will then turn it into a volume by spraying dark color at the bottom and a brighter color on top using a large airbrush size again. And you can see that the volume changes a little bit each time I add another brush stroke. Some color influence of the red balloon can also be seen on the top of it. The cabin is now not precisely defined by shading, but you can use cross sections again for more precise shape definition. Ok, the windows now. As it is very difficult to get separate windows to align, um, I start sketching them with a thick straight line in black. After that I select the color that surround the windows and I, s I brush over it partially leaving yeah, window-like shapes actually. The windows are relatively small and act as a scale element, so it has now become a huge zeppelin. Working within a selection you can add color loosely, uh, because you don't have to worry about it getting outside of the shape. Here to change a bit of the tail, I airbrush on top of everything a darker part. This will enable you to experiment and adapt a shape before deciding on the final layout. The cabin will also be reflected back into the balloon. Uh, to do so I draw its estimated shape with the selection tool again. Then I pick the balloon color and slide this color towards the cabin color. Then I spray it on, transparently, enabling it to blend in a bit. Finally I will connect the cabin to the balloon, using a straight line construction. I add white for more body of the lines and extra depth 
you can see that more white is added in front because there the construction will be lit. Uh, note how one of the black lines in front is not whitened throughout due to it having a cast shadow of the balloon. The more the sketch will get finished, the more detailed my actions will become. Some final reflections are added. I use white for that in the full color parts and I add reflections in full color at the shaded part for example. After you're finished, uh, the image can be imported in Photoshop for example to add graphics or textures. Uh, well, thank you for watching and have fun sketching.